in preparation for partaking of the Lord's Supper, we have these containers with the, the juice and the bread in the foyer. If you didn't get one, we can have someone bring one to you if you want to raise your hand. Okay. This morning, I'm going to begin by mentioning something that Wayne closed with in his uh, class this morning. And I, I think it's so appropriate for us to uh, think about. He talked about the way that God communicates to us by showing what God has done and then seeing what our response needs to be. The Bible seems to be developed or teaches that way or leads us that way from the beginning to the end. Now, the Apostle John, when he wrote the book of John, if you're familiar with it, we're going to be studying after the first year. Over and over again in the book of John, John gives an account of an event that, that in, where Jesus encountered or met someone. And then at the end of that event, we see their response, either with Christ or against Christ, uh, uh, for Christ. I want us to look at uh, this morning uh, some some things in Luke or in John the the eleventh and twelfth chapter. The last time I, I spoke, I looked at the events in John uh, the eleventh chapter. I want to take and just review those a little bit, and then go to the twelfth chapter. John records in the eleventh and twelfth chapter two events or two encounters with a family in Bethany. It's a family that uh, is made up of a brother Lazarus and two sisters Mary and Martha. And from what we can read in the text, Jesus loved this family, and this family loved Jesus very dearly. The first event is recorded, is recorded in uh, John, the 11th chapter. And this is the event where Lazarus is extremely ill. He's, he's sick unto death, it's said, so he's about to die. Jesus is, is away probably on the other side of the Jordan, a few days journey away. They sent for him, but Lazarus dies before Jesus gets there. And when Jesus arrives in, in, in Jordan, there's there a house of mourning there, or, or, or drives in Bethany, there's a house of, of mourning. One thing I want us to notice in this event is that Jesus in John 11 and verse two, he says that, that Mary, as he mentions Mary being one of the sisters, he says she is the same person who washed Jesus's feet with ointment and wiped his feet with the head of her hair. We have this event recorded here in John, the 11th chapter of Jesus, or Lazarus being sick and dying and Mary being his sister. And he point, to identify Mary, he points to an event that's in the 12th chapter, a future event to identify Mary. I think John is saying to us in this passage, pay attention to Mary. I'm going to have more to say about her in the future, but pay attention to her because that's, that's coming up. Then in John, the 12th chapter, when John records the second event, the second event he records, he's again in Bethany, this time he's in the household and it's, it's a, of, of, of Lazarus, Mary and Martha. And Jesus is reclining at the table with Lazarus. And he says, this is the Lazarus that Jesus raised from the dead. Now he's looking back to the other event and connecting those people with this event. So I think what John is trying to say, these events are events that are associated and things that happen, relate, or influence the other event. So life doesn't happen in a vacuum, I think John is saying, and pay attention to what's going on with these events. So he looked back and, and looks at, uh, at Lazarus, the one who was raised from the dead, letting us know that, that he is in the house, he's the one sitting with Jesus. So I think it's significant to know that we're in this house with, with where one has been raised from the dead and we have this sister now who is washing Jesus's feet uh, with, with her hair. I think that the, the washing of Jesus's feet is not a random event of kindness. 
but it is a response to her brother's resurrection is what I, I see going on. And that's where I want us to point. That's the, the theme that Wayne mentions that we see all through the Bible. Jesus has done something, and now here is an appropriate response to that, which is showing gratitude uh, uh, through Mary of washing in Jesus' feet. I want to go back now, and I just want to review a couple of things from the, the 11th chapter, and then we'll, we'll try to draw some conclusions from this. We know that when Jesus arrived in Bethany in John, the 11th chapter, we see a family and a community that is in mourning. This very dear brother and friend has died, and they're like many of us, and you know, there's several of us who have experienced this very same type of thing in the last few months, members of, the, of our congregation. And so we know the mourning the, and, and the sadness that accompanies that. Well, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead soon after he gets back. And it is clear from the passage that Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead demonstrates that Jesus is God because only God can impart life or give life to an individual. And I think that was part of, that's part of the, the, the focus of the teaching there. There's so many lessons we can learn from these two chapters. Part of the focus there, and I'm not gonna follow that too much is that Jesus um, uh, is God. But I wanna make two thoughts, or mention two things about that. This is consistent with what God did in the very beginning. When the man was formed out of the, of the dust of the ground, it says in Genesis 2 and verse 7, God breathed into him the breath of life. That means that from God, life came and entered into the man. So life only comes from God, and God is life himself, and he is able to impart it to others. So when Jesus transmitted life to this dead body of Lazarus here, it's almost a perfect mirror of what God did in the beginning with Adam. Jesus spoke from himself and life filled that dead body and Lazarus came out of the grave. This clearly demonstrates that Jesus is God as a matter of fact, Martha confessed that, that you are the son of God. And I think that's, that's the purpose of, uh, of that miracle. It also was preparing the disciples for the idea that Jesus could die and be raised. And like I said, there are several lessons we can study in that passage. But we have life coming back uh, uh, to Lazarus. Now, in this passage in the 11th chapter, John does not record Mary and Martha's reaction to that. Uh, rather, he records the reaction of the Jews who had come to see. Many of them believed. And the Jews who were the Jewish leaders, their reaction was, we got to get rid of him. We got to kill him. He's going to steal the crowd from us. But we don't get the reaction of, of Mary at that point in time. And that brings to me where I think we're in the 12th chapter. In verse 1, it began, well, Jesus had to leave the Bethany region, and he went again to the eastern side of the Jordan because the Jews, Jewish leaders were looking to capture him and kill him. So he went because it, was, it really wasn't time for him to be, be crucified. But if we go to the 12th chapter and verse 1, it says, Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover came to Bethany. I want us just to stop and note something there. Jesus is going to be crucified at the Passover. So he comes six days before the Passover to Bethany, where the Jews were upset because he had raised Lazarus from the dead. He knows he's going to encounter them. So Jesus comes back with purpose to come to his crucifixion. But he comes back to Bethany, and, and the, the, the account we're going to read now is, is, I think, 
is the follow-up to the 11th chapter and it's going to be Mary's response to the raising of her brother. Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Look back what Jesus had done. Now he's at this house again. This time he comes to the house. There's not mourning, but it's a festive occasion. We're about to have the Passover, which is one of the greatest holidays of the year, if not the greatest holiday of the year for the, for the Jewish people. They're gathered then. Lazarus is reclining at the table. And they made a supper there. Uh, Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of them reclining at the table with him. Mary took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. You see the setting there? I can only imagine those of us who have lost dear loved ones. If we could come to holiday dinner this next weekend and there would be setting our loved one with Jesus who had raised them, we would be profusely thanking Jesus, wouldn't we? I think that's what we have in this setting here. They've prepared a meal for Jesus. They're at the table with him. Martha is busy serving. Mary is now performing the ordinary custom of washing his feet. But she's not using any ordinary elements, is she? She has confessed that he is the Lord and God. He has raised her brother. She's using the best thing she has in the house to wash his feet and wipe them with her hair. This, I believe, is the appropriate response for what he has done for them. It's the appropriate response for the king. He gets the best treatment. Now, that brings us to where we are. We're at this table. Jesus has given us life. Now, he hasn't raised our family members to physical life, but he has raised us to never die again with him. He has given us life, each of us individually, to have submitted ourselves to him. He is our Lord and God. As we partake of this memorial feast, let's have gratitude and give ourselves in service to him. That's the message of the scripture. That's the message of how we respond to a God is so gracious. So let's think about that this morning as we take the bread, which represents his body, and the fruit of the vine, which represents his blood that he, he gave for us. Now let's offer thanks for the bread.